Alrighty, yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mr. DDT. 94 here back with another reaction video today we finna react there why 2000 movies look and feel different hmm maybe because they were a relic of their time but they still classics maybe that's why but let's watch this video and find out without further ado let's get right into it Oh, the 2000s. From cargo pants to blockbuster video to the birth of social media as we know it today, the 2000s were a decade that not only changed the world, but also cinema. We've already covered why 80s and 90s movies look and feel the way they do, so in this video, we're moving on to the 2000s to see why movies from that decade have that certain look and overall feel to them. But let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. Ah, uh, yes, Borat. <laughs> Most decades have some category or genre of movies that are more common than the rest. Specific genres that you can say define that decade. For example, when you think of the 1940s, you probably think westerns. Yep. The 70s, probably crime drama. Well, the 2000s were no different. There were a few genres that stood out during the 2000s because they were either getting a resurgence or really hitting their stride with mainstream audiences. The 2000s, I say, was the last decade for originality in Hollywood. Just taking chances with certain movies and making uh, franchises out of them. I say the 2000s was the last year because around the 2010s and uh, till present day, they just doing remakes at this point. And it's sad. It's, it's very sad. It's like that's why Hollywood is dead right now. That's why I think about it. What what outside of outside of the superhero movie? What movie can you honestly say you would go to the movie theaters to watch? Not a superhero movie. Exactly. They don't make nothing no more. Everything the action movies, they don't hit the same no more. The comedy movies are straight butt cheeks. You know what I'm saying? Then you got the rom the romantic the romantic movies, whether it's a rom com or a thriller or a, a, or a, or a drama filled uh romantic movie. They don't hit. That's why I'm saying, dog, the last this was the last decade of originality in Hollywood. After this Movies just like came like once once in a full blue moon. That's how it is now. You get a good and you get a movie you anticipating once in a full blue moon, and the rest of them you just have to watch when they come out on streaming services. They don't like movies don't even last in the movie theater for that long. Like the uh the Bad Boys movie. The Bad Boys movie was only in theaters for like four weeks, and then it was straight on streaming services. Like what? But, hey, like. What the fuck is the purpose of putting it in the theaters if you're just going to put it on the streaming services four weeks later? Like, literally, it was four weeks. The first week, the second week, it did numbers. The third week, okay. The fourth week, all right, cool. Then right after that, then right at that fourth week, they put it on streaming service. And you just sitting there like, well, why the fuck was it in theaters then? If I could just watch the, if I only had to wait four weeks, it, de it defeats the purpose. Holly, this is why Hollywood is going broke. This is why Hollywood is 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 not making anything innovative these days. All the movies are trash, and the only movies you anticipate are the superhero movies. It's sad. It's sad. We ain't got no more Black Hood movies no more. We ain't got no more Black Hood movies no more. Tyler Perry done fucked up the whole black genre. And then when we finally do get a black movie that seems interesting, it looked like some bullshit. <laughs> That's why we sit up here watching Tubi movies because it ain't no hood classics no more, bro. We ain't got no more hood classics. Name one last hood classic you've seen so far. Ain't been no hood classics in the... Man, it ain't been a hood classic in a long time, bro. It ain't been no hood classic in a long time. I think the last hood classic we got was Lottery Ticket, bro. <laughs> like, really think about that. Lottery Ticket was the last hood movie. Think about it. A Bow Wow movie was the last hood classic we got, bro. That's sad. <laughs> we ain't got no hood classic since, bro. This this shit been uh, this shit been Tyler Perry and his crew, and it's just been hit or miss ever since, dog. It ain't been no hood classics, dog. 
if you say the fucking um think like a man series i'm gonna slap the shit out of you audiences the first type of movies that come to mind are superhero movies from what some consider to be the birth of modern superhero films with sam raimi's spider-man to the birth of the marvel cinematic universe with 2008's nah it was blade blade was the beginning Blade, if it wasn't for Blade, none of this shit would be where it is right now. <laughs> the Tony Starks, the, 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 the Captain Americas, the Black Widows, the, uh, 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 the, Ultr the Age of Ultrons, the Thanoses, none of that would have been possible without Blade. So I always remember that. A black man, a black superhero started all of this. Always keep that in mind. Shout out to Wesley Snipes. Iron Man, all the way to Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. The 2000s were the decade that started the mega popularity and obsession of the superhero genre that so many love today. If it wasn't for the 2000s, we probably wouldn't have had as many superhero movies as we do today. And we wouldn't have seen the birth of cinematic universes which all started with 2008's Iron Man and saw their crazy rise during the 2010s. It goes without saying that even though there weren't as many as there are today, superhero films were a defining genre of the 2000s. Another genre that was based Basically synonymous with the 2000s was that of raunchy comedies. Yep. Super bad. Hangover. Borat. Step Brothers. Euro Trip. Old School. Tropic Thunder. Pineapple Express. All bangers right here. All these are bangers, bruh. Harold and Kumar. Uh, Harold and Kumar series. Fucking uh, American Pie. Goddamn, uh, goddamn, uh, 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 Malibu's Most Wanted, man, come on, dog. All these little white comedies, the white comedies was hitting, bruh. That's how goaded the 2000s was, bruh. The white comedies was hitting, bruh. Come on, dog. What is we talking about? These are just some of the comedies that many consider to be comedy gold and some of the best out there. These types of comedies were already popular in previous decades, but the 2000s took them to a whole new level. Facts. They were also a huge stepping stone for Borat. some of the most popular oh, actors bro, we Borat still see today. Though. Jonah Hill with Superbad, Sasha Baron Cohen with Borat, Steve Carell with The 40-Year-Old Virgin, these are just some examples of actors that really exploded during the 2000s. And although raunchy, these comedies were usually very sweet and heartwarming at the same time. The most recent movie that gave me those 2000 raunchy comedy vibes was Good Boys. This yeah. last one isn't so much a type of movie, but there were a few movie franchises that blew up during the 2000s and are still ones that we know and love today. Harry Potter. Fast and the Furious, mm. Pirates of the Caribbean, mm. Shrek, mm. Ice Age, mm. all of these and more are franchises that Come on, dog. Come on, dog. Even the animation was better, dog. Come on, dog. What is we, bro? Hollywood. What has Hollywood been on these past couple of years, dog? They really fucking up, dog. The two thousands really was the last good decade of movies, dog. After that, it goes straight to shit. It really does scream the 2000s and are part of the overall feels of that decade. Somebody These franchises are still looked upon very fondly and some of them are still getting sequels and spin-offs to this day. Yes, big franchises shit. have come in each decade, but there are she a certain few that resonate with the 2000s. The, the 90s were the decade where film stock began to reach its peak of quality and digital was starting to become used for full-length feature films. But the 2000s were when the use of digital exploded and took over the industry. The shift not only gave us new formats, but also changed how movies were made and edited from there on out. It also changed how movies looked. With digital post-production, it became much easier to color grade films in post versus in camera. This resulted in more movies being digitally color graded, and this trend eventually evolved into the cinematic look that we think of today. This move to digital has also made it easier for creators to get more creative with their films. Post-production has become an incredibly important part of the filmmaking process. Sometimes the most important part when you think of movies that make heavy use of CGI. Well, Fix It in Post has even become a joke among film lovers today. This shift to digital had many cost-saving benefits. Although film is still sought after and preferred by some, it's a no-brainer to go digital because of the cost savings. Film is an expensive medium and it's impossible to reuse. This means less waste, which in turn means more money left in your pocket. If a take goes- And plus it's better to do it digital anyway because now you don't have to worry about film being ran out. Now you can just, if you send it to digital, it just makes it, it it's more of a convenience. It makes it more better. Plus, you can just store it on a fucking computer and just leave it there and then come back to it when you need to come back to it. It goes poorly. You didn't just waste a canister of film. You can redo it for cheap. 
Editing with film is also more time consuming and costly. All of these time savings help studios stay under budget and stick to their schedules. These time and cost savings have also resulted in the rise of the indie film industry. This rise of indie films continued well into the 2010s and we can thank the 2000s and the rise of digital for that. Even though CGI can be dated way back to 1958 with the release of Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo, it wasn't until the 90s where we really saw its true potential, and then it wasn't until the 2000s where it really took the world by storm. CGI opened the doors for filmmakers to put things on screen we didn't think possible just a few years prior, and in many cases it replaced practical effects because of its cost effectiveness. 1999 Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, made heavy use of CGI for many of its characters, including the most badass Star Wars character of all time, Jar Jar Binks. Hey, this yo. showed us that when done well, CGI could be used not just as an addition or ancillary thing in a film, but as a main component of it. It ushered in a wave of movies that used complete CGI replacement of characters, such as in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, where whenever we saw Spider-Man swinging through the city, it was a full body replacement and it looked so good. We also saw some amazing motion capture performances during this time. It showed us that these characters can really captivate an audience, such as Andy Serkis's Gollum in The Lord of the Rings. These days, CGI is used everywhere, even in places we wouldn't have expected. But during the 2000s, it was a defining quality of why movies from that decade feel like 2000s movies. Avatar basically broke box office records because of its CGI and the fact that it was a must-see 3D movie. The 2000s cemented CGI and digital effects as a staple in the film industry. During the 2000s, we also saw a huge spike in the amount of fully 3D animated films. In the 90s, we saw the first fully animated feature film with Pixar's Toy Story. But during the 2000s, we saw the number of animated films grow immensely. You're wearing sweatpants. It's Monday. So? Similar to the 80s and 90s, 2000s movies can also be distinguished by their fashion. Cargo pants, emo, jeans with words on their butts like juicy. The 2000s were unique for lack of a better term. But then again, every decade seems to have its own flair. Each decade seems to usher in a new wave of fashion, hairstyles, and overall looks that can help us distinguish it from other decades. And the 2000s were no different. The 2000s were the era of looking cool, but cool came in many different forms. And the 2000s took major fashion influence from the music industry. This is probably the most 2000s looking image I have seen. From emo Bad. to wannabe gangster to mid game basketball player with the sweatbands, the 2000s took a lot of influence from media when defining their most popular styles. Don't get me wrong, movies from the 2000s made use of a lot of different fashion trends, but most movies set in that decade are very much distinguishable as distinctly 2000s. Activate it and it broadcasts your location. Hello, Moto. Similar to fashion, technology plays a big part in the overall feel of a decade. And the 2000s were no different. I would even say that the 2000s were a decade where the tech could really place a movie. MP3 players, or more specifically iPods, cell phones, iPhones, those colorful iMacs, social media. These were just some of the technologies that we saw a lot of during the 2000s. From TV series to movies, we saw them all over the place. Like I mentioned before, the 2000s were the decade of trying to look cool, and this was done by both the style you had, but also the technology you used. Movies today that try to replicate the 2000s often use these pieces of tech as a recognizable way of placing films. Good. I want to show you something. A lot of people in the room, you need more space. Do you remember these? When I was a kid, I often wondered why the heck someone would want to put black bars on the top and bottom of my screen. It seemed like a waste of space. Why were all of the TV shows I was watching making full use of my 27 inch tube TV, but most movies were showing letterboxes? It's because they were shot in a wide format. Wide formats in HD wasn't anything new in the 2000s. In fact, the first widescreen film dates all the way back to 1953 with The Robe, and movies shot on film can be converted to HD digital versions. But what was new during this decade was HDTVs coming to our homes and mostly matching the widescreen formats we were seeing before. In the 2000s, we saw a boom in HDTV. Our home theaters were rising in quality. In the early 2000s, DVDs were still extremely popular with their higher quality when compared to VHS, but now we saw blue Blu-ray and HD DVD, if you remember those. This was on another level. We could watch movies the way they were intended to be watched from the comfort of our own home. <laughs> In 
And of course, how could we not mention music when we talk about 2000s movies? The 2000s saw the rise of pirated music and because of this, it allowed people to really experiment with their music tastes on the cheap. Now, I would never do such a thing, of course, but a friend of a friend You're of mine was into all law. sorts of genres of music. But the two genres that stood out the most during this decade were rap and punk rock. And the awesome part was that even though people had their preferences of genre, most still liked and listened to a variety of genres because of how easy it was to get music. If you grew up in the 2000s, tell me you didn't listen to Holiday by Green Day and In the Club by 50 Cent and I'll tell you you're lying. Gangster rap, or more specifically 50 Cent, and punk rock were the genres that when used in a movie really screamed the 2000s. Thanks for watching. We really hope you enjoyed this video. The 2000s. Alrighty, man. Alrighty. Go, 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 good movie. Go, go, good, good, good video. Good video. But anyway, so that's just gonna about do it for this one. Most definitely, man. 2000s was probably the last decade of just overall creativity within Hollywood, and now Hollywood is a shell of itself because you have cancel culture. You have uh lgbtq you have all these different factors that play into it so it's it's hard to be creative without making people mad it's hard to make anything these days and take a chance to make a ip original without not getting the budget back on the movie because you took a chance and a risk and it didn't pay off and I, and I feel like that's that's bad because in the 2000s they were taking chances left and right and they were sticking <laughs> you know what I'm saying some didn't get the most some didn't get the some didn't get the most some got over some got way over their budget some just some just met their budget and had a little bit extra. Some just met the budget and was good enough for like, all right, we'll probably do a sequel somewhere down the line if they want it. <laughs> and some didn't make the budget. So I understand, you know what I'm saying? It's a business at the end of the day. I do understand that, but in order to make money, you got to you got to take chances. And that's what's going on in Hollywood right now. They're not taking chances. They're just rebooting shit. Everything is getting rebooted. TV shows rebooted. Movies rebooted. It's like nothing original. Nothing is original. But anyways, though, that's just going to about do it for this one, man. I will see you all in the next video. Till then, peace out.